Hey guys, it's your Kingdom Come. We're back here with another podcast. And today's question in today's podcast is on, do Christians need to go to church? What is the point of church? Do Christians actually have to attend church every mm. part of the week? It is a good question. It is a good question. Some people will go, man, every single week? I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, some people... Some people might say, well, you know, I only I try to only go on, on Easter and on Christmas and, you know, stuff like that. And we'll, we'll get into all that. Yeah. But it, but before we answer these uh, these questions, you know, um, I, I want to make sure that we're that we make some uh, some provisions for for people that uh, that that maybe they can't go to church. You know, there are some people people out there and man, I feel for you, um, you know, who can't go to church because they have you know, physical disabilities or physical mm. issues. And I understand that, you know, um, I, I, I get it. I, I would say that, you know, if you, if you are a member of a church, uh, that is what deacons are for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, um, I know you had, you had a story about a guy. Didn't, didn't you go to church with a guy that used to take people to yeah, church? I, like, don't, I, I didn't know like his like official, like what he actually did, but there was this guy, this old church I used to go to. There was this guy or uh, who used to drive a van and he would bring like a bunch of like mentally like disabled people to our church, and I thought that was like, man, that's that's amazing. That's awesome. You know, like yeah. just he loaded up the whole van yeah. with all these people, and mm-hmm. I'm like, man, that that's amazing. Yeah. You know, and I feel like you know if you if you do have you know physical disabilities like you can't walk or something, you know, that's why the church has deacons. Yeah. You know, that's why the church is the church body. Yeah, yeah, you know? because we all have different gifts. We yeah. all can serve in different capacities mm-hmm. that the Lord has, you know, given to us. Mm-hmm. And so we should benefit the church, benefit yep. God's people by by using our gifts yep. for that. Yep. And, and yeah, yeah. And the other thing too is, um, you know, some people can't go to church because they're sick. Yeah. And we yeah, the, like not we're not talking about like if you got. If you got the sniffles or something, <laughs> yeah. you can still go to church with that as long as you're not dying, yeah. you know. But I'm talking about like you know you 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 puking your brains out. Or <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be puking my brains no. out the next week either. No, so other yeah. people can so just catch stay that, home, so. please. Yeah, please. keep just, that with yeah. you. Yeah, by yourself. Um, you and, know, yeah, yeah. And some people will kill themselves over because they they miss one week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the whole year, they're yeah, like, yeah. "Oh, I'm sick, and I'm not a Christian because <laughs> yeah. I was." Don't kill yourself over that, man. Like we, we get it. The Lord gets it. Mm-hmm. You know, the Lord understands yep. what it's like to be in a human body, to undergo suffering and all that. So, man, don't worry about that. That's mm-hmm. okay. You yeah. know, that's okay. Yeah. But so, uh, I, our yeah. main audience, though, is those who say, "I only need Jesus in my Bible." Mm-hmm. This is who who we're directing this to. It's mm-hmm. the people who say, "I don't need church." Yeah, I have on some people. I have online church. Mm-hmm. I have live stream. I watch church every Sunday mm-hmm. on my computer on YouTube, and I read my Bible throughout the week. Yeah, that's great and all, mm-hmm. but you need to be in a local church with elders, pastors, deacons, mm. um, other believers who who will edify you and build you up in the faith. You need to be around people like that. And the mm-hmm. Bible gives clear mandates for that. The Bible, the Lord has given people gifts to operate as the church should operate, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And, and one other thing, like as we talk about like the making provisions for people that don't, you know, that, that aren't able to do it. So primarily we're targeting like if you have physical issues, like physical stuff that that is you know that is preventing you like health things and things like that like I, I get that you know yeah. I understand that there hopefully there are people in your church that are coming up alongside you and uh, and aiding you in that maybe like I said like getting you to church yeah yeah or stuff like that um, one other thing one other excuse that I've that I've heard people give before um, that I'm I, I want to say that we're not we're not swinging the hammer on you guys either there are there are legitimately people who live out in the middle of nowhere and actually don't have a church that is close to them. They would have to drive like 
all day Two long. Hour, three hours, <laughs> you know? four hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever been in the in the middle of like New Mexico? I heard a story of one guy that was in New Mexico, and he was like, he explained it like, I mean, if you're from New Mexico, please don't take offense to this. <laughs> but there was there was this guy that said he drove through New Mexico, and he treated it like there was literally nothing in the whole entire state. Like it was a straight road right through. <laughs> yeah. Like he treated Desert, it like yeah. <laughs> there's not even a gas station in New Mexico. <laughs> but <laughs> again, no offense if you're from New Mexico. I know that there are people there yeah you know? yeah but but i'm not talking about people like that but, but what i would say is if you're in a situation where like you know like oh man i don't have a church close to me and i don't know what to do and i would say uh you could start small start one start one in your home yeah. you know and you don't have to be and i get if you don't look i get it if you feel like you're not called to preach or anything like that but if you're starting one in your home then you're literally just like preaching to your family and yeah. that is something that you can handle. Yeah. That's something you can do. You know, so uh, that would just be my encouragement in in, in that case. And, mm. uh, you know, you start to meet other believers, invite them to church at your home, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, and so that's, I just want to make it clear. Those are the provisions that we're making for people. So if you fall into one of those categories, man, we're not, we're not like dropping the hammer on you or anything. So I understand that there are uh, issues that cause people yeah. to not be able to go to church. We're talking, like you said, about the people who say, I need Jesus in my Bible and I don't need other believers. Yeah, and the church, and they live right across the church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah. like on their windowsill and they have their Bible open and church is going. And hey, all man, that. you know, <laughs> if that's you, if you live across the street from a church, then there's about a hundred people in New Mexico that would kill to be you. <laughs> 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 yeah, even, 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 oh man, that like in the, <laughs> man, this is going like the last podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So, yeah, in 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 Genesis, right? Um, God, you know, and we, you know, as we as we look at this, you know, why do we need church? Why do we need a Christian community? Mm-hmm. Well, in Genesis two eighteen, God. Is he's created Adam? He's created the animals and mm. and all in the beauties of this world and and all that. And God and God says it's good. Everything is good. But the one thing He says it's not good. He says it's not good that man is alone. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yep. It's not good that man is alone. So if if God has said that, you know, then we have to realize, man, it's not good for us as Christians to be alone. Mm, man, it's not mm-hmm. good for us to to live out this life and carrying our cross and, and, and doing all this stuff alone. We need other believers, mm-hmm. you know, and that's just a, like a, a shot to pride. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, like we need other people. Mm-hmm. No matter how spiritual you might think you are, no matter how mature in the faith you might think you are, you need other believers. Mm-hmm. There is no excuse for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then there are some people, there are some people who will say, you know, I love God, but I don't love his people, you know, mm. uh, because let's, let's face it. Um, the people of God, um, can still mess up, you mm. know, we're still fallen people. Yeah. Um, and then uh, of course there's the situation where there's people who are in the church, in the physical church, going to a church building that are not saved. Mm. So there's that whole element too. So people get, people get hurt in churches sometimes. Yeah. Um, but never use church hurt, church hurt as an excuse to stop going to church. Mm. You know, I mean, there have been plenty of people who have experienced that I know, people I know, even myself at points, who mm. have experienced church hurt to such a degree that if, I mean, if, if they weren't saved, then that would be the moment that they would have stopped <laughs> going to church. Yeah. Because you, people have experienced a lot of, a lot of church hurt, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, and I get that, but never use that as an excuse to stop going to church. Mm. Um, and never use that as an excuse to hate the people of God. Yeah. Uh, in First John five, it says, uh, "Everyone who believes that Jesus in the, is the Christ has been born of God." And to every everybody's going to be like, "Yeah, Amen, Amen." That yes, yes, I need Jesus in my Bible, and that's it. But then, what does it say? It says, "Everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him." Mm. That's what it says. It says, "If you love God, if you really love God, you can't say." that you love God and you don't love his people. Yeah. If you really love God, you're going to love his people and mm. you're going to want to be with them and you're going to want to gather with them. Yeah, and I know that it's hard. Look, I know you might go to a church where people are nasty to you and, and that's not, that's not right that they're mm. nasty to you. Um, but if you are a member of that body and you guys are going through a tough time in that church, um, don't use church hurt as an excuse to stop going, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, the other thing, too, is like, you know, when we get in church splits or, you know, something's happening, something's going on in the church, 
we always have to remember why are we here mm. why are we here are we here for the hot dogs and pizza after church <laughs> yeah. are we here for yeah. the for the, the the great music and the great musicians that go up on stage and the concert and the fog lights and the fog smoke that, that churches have nowadays and the disco ball, yeah. you know? Are we there for that? Yeah. Are we there for Christ? Mm. Are we there to meet with the living God, mm -hmm. you know? And honestly, I'm just going to say, I was going to end off with it, but I'm going to say it. Yeah. J.C. Ryle said, you cannot give God one single day in seven. It wearies you to spend one seventh part of your time in attempting to know anything about him before whose bar you are going you are going one day to stand. So JC Ryle is saying, listen, you can't even spend one seventh of your week mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. You know, what makes you think you're going to spend eternity with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. honestly, yeah. like if you if you don't want to meet with the living God, what makes you think you want to spend eternity with him? Mm. Because Sunday is the day where all the saints gather in, in, in heaven and earth touch, yeah. man. Yeah. Heaven and earth touch. The presence of God hits, man. Mm. And the Holy Spirit is present mm -hmm. there in that moment yeah. with all the believers, right? Jesus said, where one or where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am yeah. also, yep. right? So I think that's just important that we are there for God. We are mm -hmm. there to meet with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would agree. And one other thing I want to add to that, you talked about the churches that have the 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 flash and bang and all all that you know all that all that stuff i think that and and you know let this let this be a question of your conscience not a question where i'm like imposing a, a rule on you or anything like that i want it to be a question that you go and ask yourself is the stuff that i'm doing at my church helping me to focus on god or is it distracting me from god because I saw, um, actually, you, you know, you, I, and I don't, I don't know what church it was, so I don't, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't, I really don't know what church it was, but you showed me this, this reel, this video the other day. <laughs> I forgot the name. With of it, it's yeah. like this guy is up on the stage and there's like strobe lights and everything, and <laughs> and he's like he's rapping, and I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> You know, yeah. like I thought, I'm like, ah, oh, this is probably like their Friday night outreach concert thing, right? <laughs> no, it's and a he goes, no, it's a Sunday morning. <laughs> And I'm like, man, what do you like? That's not, that's not going to direct your focus to God. That's gonna make you sit back in your chair, you know, like slouch down <laughs> like this, you know. And it's gonna make you just say, wow, look at the, look at how good these people are. But you know what you're doing at that point? You're directing your worship away from God and to these people. And let mm -hmm. me tell you something about the Old Testament. God is jealous for the worship that is rightfully his. Mm. And if you give worship to a place that doesn't belong, which is anywhere besides him, he does not like that. And, mm. and, and I mean, I'm just going to say in the Old Testament, usually uh, people that did that were very severely mm. uh, punished. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I just I just want to say that. Like just just ask yourself. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that that uh strobe lights are I mean uh, I don't uh, agree with that. It's yeah, a, I don't like strobe lights. Uh, yeah. But um yeah. yeah. No. Strobe lights in a in a in a Sunday morning service, absolutely not. Yeah. But yeah. but all those things aside, whatever it is that you do at your church, just ask yourself. Ask yourself, is what I'm doing helping me to focus on God or is it directing my focus away from God? And directing my worship to something else. Mm, yeah, because that shouldn't be the case. Yeah, and I, I like what Leonard Ravenhill said. He said, um, "Entertainment is the devil's substitute for joy." Yeah, it's true. It's, it's the devil's substitute for God, mm, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, entertainment. You know, we see churches, and this is this will probably be another podcast, but yeah, you know, churches. Man, they make this huge thing about you know about the music and all this and that which is great man i love worship and all this and that but when it's to the point where it becomes entertainment mm. and not worshiping god that's a problem mm -hmm. you know yep. and that it becomes a real real problem yeah yep and and one other thing like like we said we talked about the christian you, you know you need in christian community well another thing is if you're a genuine believer then the christian community suffers when you are not there the Christian community, mm. and, and can you believe that? I mean, it's it's true. I'm just going to read from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm going to have the text up on the screen too so that you can follow along. It's a longer passage, but it says this. Uh, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. 
For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. Uh, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, uh, that, would, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, uh, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would, the sense of, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot, this is what I want to focus on here. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker and indispensable, and on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. Uh, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And I, I know that was, a, that was a longer text. But here's the point. All right. God has given each person who is genuinely his a gift mm. right and he expects us I, I, it's not a stretch to say that he expects us mm. to use our gifts for him within the body and and yeah. man if if you walk into church on a sunday and, and you treat it like you're just getting something from the people there um then you're not gonna you're not gonna get that but if you look at God's word where it says that we are all members of the body and we're all required to participate in his body, man, how can you do that if you're not mm. in a church? How can you mm. do that if you're not in a local church? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, when we talk about, you know, the gifts that God gives to his people, you know, so many believers, they think like they have to be a Billy Graham in order for God to use them. And yeah. I brought this up many times on the podcast before, is that so many people think they... They need to be in some form of uh, past, pastoral calling. They have yeah. to have a pastoral yeah, calling. Yeah, like some on their kind life. of ministry thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like everyone need like they, some Christians believe they need some, like something crazy like that. Yeah. And that's not the case. You know, you could be some, you could be a homeschool mom, you yeah. know, and you can be the most um, person, you could be one of the most influential people in your church. Mm -hmm. Everyone will look up to you because of how you, um, organize your family and how you raise them up in Christ. You mm. know, you are a big part of advancing the kingdom of God on this earth. Yeah. You know? So like some people will be like, I'm invaluable for the kingdom. Don't say that. Yeah. You know, God has given you gifts. God has given you talents. God has given you uh, time, Yeah. you know, as a gift to, yeah. to, to uh, use your gift for his glory. Mm -hmm. So, so don't think you're invaluable. Everyone has been given a gift by Christ and, and use it for his glory, whatever that may be. Yeah. You know, so don't think you're invaluable. And that, that leads people to sometimes if they think, oh, you know, I'm invaluable. The church can go on without me. You know, then yeah. they, then they, that leads to people just sitting at home on Sunday mornings and mm. not, and not going to church, mm. you know, and, and that's, that's not true mm. based off of God's word. That is not true. Uh, the church needs, the, the church needs you. Yeah. If you are a believer, God has put you in the body and I mean, have you ever tried to like I've I've heard people say like, you know, if you take off like your thumb or something, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, people have always said it's hard to grip things when you don't have a thumb. Mm. And so that's like to me, people some people think that that's like insignificant, you yeah. know, that the thumb's not a significant part of the body, but it's actually, you know, that's that's an example of something that's more significant than mm. you would think it is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. So so don't think that don't think that you're not significant just because uh, you're not the eye or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And uh, Ephesians 4, I, I want to get to this, man. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, uh, 11 says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints 
for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Right? So we see God has given us, you know, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, mm. the teachers. Now, I don't believe there's any apostles today. I don't believe there's crazy prophets like they had back then today that's my opinion mm -hmm. some people will think different okay whatever that's a different podcast but anyway <laughs> but i believe that there's evangelists that there's pastors that there's teachers i believe that god has given us these things to to what to equip the saints for what the work of ministry mm -hmm. and then what else for building up yeah. the body of christ for what? So that we can attain the and be mature as, as Christians. How can you do that without the church? Mm -hmm. How can you do that on your own? How can you do that while you're you're just reading your Bible and watching online sermons? You mm -hmm. can't do that. You mm -hmm. have to be in the local church. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I there's so many scripture references that show that you need to be part of a local church. And mm -hmm. I, we get this question uh, sometimes too. Is online church a substitute for actual church? No, 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 no. And the reason is why is because you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. Even if you had your family together and you watch an online church, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe it's not enough because you need to be under pastors and elders and you need to be surrounded by believers. Mm -hmm. You will not grow by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You won't. Yep. And, and, and that's especially, like I said before, you know, if God has given you Christian community. And what I mean by that, I don't mean like just people you know. I mean, if God has placed Christians around you, like what we said before, if the church is across the street and you're not going, <laughs> right? Uh, I will come <laughs> over there and I will visit you. <laughs> I'll pull you out of your house, get you off the couch and run you through the door and yeah. sit you in the pew. <laughs> if God, so if God has given you those people, right? If God has given you people around you, then he has set it up so that you can, so that he can use those people to mm. help you grow. Yeah. You know, if you're out, out, out isolated in the middle of nowhere and, and you don't have a church near you, then God will take care of you. He will take care of you and you start that church in your house and you, you grow through each other. And if he wants to bring in someone else that will help you grow, then he will at that point. Yeah. And I believe, you know, I believe that he God would. will figure in that. it out. Yeah. yeah. But, and, and so it's really just a matter of faith here. God says, what does it say? It says, don't reject the gathering of the brethren, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And so we really just need to respond in faith and do what God says. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about, you know, when we talk about, um, like you said, like we're a couple frequently asked questions we wanted to address here, right? And that's one of them. Uh, is online church a good substitute for actual church? And, and uh, I would say no, you know. Um, Colossians 3.16 puts it this way. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And again, the same question would come up as the last text, and people would say, well, I can do that at home. Mm. Well, it just doesn't work as well. I, I don't really know how else to put it. It just, it just doesn't, doesn't work, work as well yeah. at home. And, and again, you bring it back to if God has put believers around you, he has commanded you to gather with them. He mm. has. And, and, you know... That's just that's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's true. Like, how can you sing psalms and hymns and admonish one another and teach one another if you're not surrounded with a group of people? Mm, man, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And Hebrews ten twenty four. This is this is the key verse for you if you wanna. If you're like, okay, where's the verse where it says don't uh, you have to go to church? You mm, know, this and that. Mm -hmm. Here's the verse for you. Yeah. <laughs> And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and to good works, not neglecting to meet together as in the habit of some, mm. but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Mm -hmm. So, right, he, the, the author of Hebrews says, don't neglect the gathering. Yeah. Don't neglect meeting together mm -hmm. as some others do. But but what do you do? You encourage one another. You build each other up in the faith. And some people will be like, well, that's referencing to outside the church. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, this is referencing to meeting in a local gathering in if, if in third world countries, maybe sometimes they don't have a building. But this is a gathering. Yeah. And you know, how, you know how I know that is because if you look at this verse, um, when you talk about stirring up one another, the love and good works. <laughs> 
a person who is not saved is not going to consistently stir you up to that. So it's not talking about outside the church. Mm. It's talking about inside the church because believers are the ones who, because of the change of life they had, are going to consistently stir you up to loving good works. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So also, um, and again, remember the provisions we made at the beginning. Like if you're at home and you can't move, like I'm not dropping the hammer on you, all right? <laughs> yeah. If you fall into one of those categories that we said at the beginning, I'm not dropping the hammer on you, so don't don't worry. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and, and like like we said before, like if you have physical uh, infirmities or you're, you can't walk, you you know, stuff like that, man, God's church should take care of you. You mm -hmm. know, you should be part of a church that will take care of yeah. your needs. They yep. will come and get you and bring you to church. Yep. yep. That's how that's how the church should operate. Yeah. Out of love for for one another. Mm. You know. Yeah. And the church. This is like a wide ranging topic, and we're tr you know we're trying to cover all the bases here and try to hit everybody almost. And everybody's in a different situation. I get it, but we're trying to hit everybody. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the last question, you know, talking about frequently asked questions. Uh, asked questions <laughs> frequently asked questions that people ask is what can I get out of the church mm. what can I get out of the church um, and if you are asking that question I got gotcha. you because you should not be asking that question too many people go into church with a consumer mindset I want you to remember that the consumer mindset, right? I think everybody's been guilty of it at some oh, point. Oh, yeah. You walk yeah. into church, you sit down in the pew, and you go, I wonder how good the worship team's going to be today. And you sit there and you go, ah, oh, the drummer messed up. I can only say that because I'm a drummer. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Uh, or and then, and then you sit there and you say, hmm, I wonder what the pastor's going to say. And then you go home complaining because the pastor didn't give an application that directly fits what you're going through in your life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if if you're in a if you're in a church that's like a big church, I mean, the, do you expect the pastor to give an application for you specifically in every your life time. every week? I mean, he's got like 500 other people to think about besides you, you <laughs> yeah. know? And and that's really the point though. That sometimes people go into the church and they think the church revolves around them. It doesn't. It revolves around Christ, mm. you know? Yeah. And 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 when we walk into church thinking, what can I get from the church? Mm. A lot of times, you know, people will walk in and they'll say like, uh, oh, I just need my, my fill me up. It's just gonna, you know, it's gonna get me through the week and stuff like yeah. that. And I kind of understand the sentiment of that, but that's not the way that you should walk into church. Mm. The way that you should walk into church is what can I give to the church as we all together meet in the presence of God? Mm. Amen and I just that. wanna just uh, think about in, in the book of Matthew chapter 25, Christ tells a parable about um, this this guy the, who was this you know this big rich guy that goes on a trip, and he gives three of his guy, three of his you know guys underneath him um, some some in investments some money mm -hmm. right um, he gives he gives some talents to one guy some talents to another guy and some talents to another guy a talent was like a form of currency back then um, and one guy you know he takes the talents and he makes a bunch more. And then the, and another guy takes the talents and he makes a bunch more. And then the third guy, he takes the talents and he takes the talent and he buries it in the ground. And really the talents are supposed to represent in this parable the gifts that God has given us with mm. which to serve his people, with which to serve him and his kingdom. And, uh, you know, those, those first two, you know, those first two groups, those first two guys, mm -hmm. you know, they, they took the stuff that God has given them, the gifts that God gave them in that sense, and they used them for the kingdom. Mm. And, and, and man, when the guy came back, he rewarded them. He was, he was, he was just thrilled with them. Yeah. So, right? so well done. Yeah. Well yeah. Done. And, I mean, yeah. and so, so I would say, first of all, if you have, God has given you a gift. If you're a believer, God has given you a gift with which to serve his people. And if you use that gift and man, you should have that in your mind, mm. you know, but, but also the other guy who buried the talent, right? I can, all I can think of is the person who goes to church and sits down in the pew mm. and doesn't do anything. Mm. Yeah. And just, and just doesn't serve the church or anything. That's like burying your talent, like sitting mm. on your talent, yeah. you know, like sitting on the gift that God gave you mm. and you're not using it. Yeah. I, and man, did you, have you read the end of that passage? Basically, if you're not using your gift for God, if you're not serving God with your life, um, if you're not bearing fruit, mm. 
then that demonstrates that you've never really been made alive by God, that you're never really saved. Yeah. So you, yeah. if that's the case, man, just think about the gospel. Think about what Christ did for you, that he died for your sins, that he was buried and he was raised on the third day. Mm. Think about that and believe that and then go use your gifts for him. So yeah. I know we covered a lot of bases here. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. yeah so if you're not plugged into a local church, man, get plugged into one. Mm. And uh, yeah. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you guys for joining our podcast. We'll see you next time. God bless.